um, I'm from Pretoria, uh, but I stay here in Jurek now. Mm -hmm. That's because of that animation. Uh, that's what put me here. Uh, Lungi is my colleague. Lungi and Rob are my colleagues. Um, yeah, I mean, he asked me to come here and speak about animation, you know, the new power of animation. And that's one passion of mine that I've always had ever since like the days of Looney Tunes in the morning. You know, like I'm one guy who used to like take a bath in the dining room while I'm watching TV. And a kid. That's cool, but because I didn't, I didn't want to miss cartoons. Morning cartoons were my hey. So funny enough, that what led me to my career today. I'm a professional animator, senior animator at Monarchy. I'm not here in their capacity, but so, but yeah. Ah, uh, you can run. So why animate, guys? Like, I mean, if you can shoot. You know, with a camera, why animate? You know, it's expensive, it's tiring, it um, takes so much time. Why? You know, but uh, like I said, like, uh, unless your, your story is about two dogs that rest they are away from rest to riches, or a cow that gives strawberry milkshake, <laughs> strawberry uh, flavored milk, or a teenager who gets bitten by a radioactive spider, then maybe, just maybe, you need to tell your story differently. So that's where animation comes in. Like, if you can tell a story about some woman who goes from one place to the next, and, you know, and it doesn't need animation, don't do it. It's unnecessary. So we all have an idea, or in general terms, what animation is all about, you know, like we associate uh, um, that word with uh, brands like Disney, Pixar, you know, or titles like Bugs Bunny, Toy Story. So I'm not going to dwell too much into that, the history of animation. We have an idea of what it's all about. But what I'm here for is to let you know as to how it's made. So uh, there's types of animations, like there's... Uh, um, 2D animation, you know, like the drawn out stuff, and there's a, uh, um, what do you call, uh, stop frame animation, which is mainly like moving stuff one by one, taking pictures after every single frame for 25 frames per second, you know, like it's, it's pretty tough, I respect people who do that, because yes, it's labor intense. <laughs> So, and there's uh, also uh, animatronics, so what these guys do is they can, they can make a face like mine and they almost make like a robot and they control it with the remote control. Back in the days, that's what they used to do. If you remember Robocop, if you remember um, <coughs> most sci-fi movies, that's what they did. Like, I think even... Jurassic Park. Yes, Jurassic Park, some of it, like those, those, even uh, that shark movie, what, what is Jaws. Jaws, yes, they use a lot of electron, uh, uh, in my matrix, and, but my focus is going to be on 3D animation because that's what I do, so I'm going to talk about the 3D animation pipeline. So, so pre-production when it comes to animation. You know, like, uh, it's all about, we all have a story. Like, you guys are filmmakers, we all have a story. And like I said in the beginning, your story has to have the need to do animation in it. So, keep on rolling. So, you know, it starts with an idea, like any other movie. It starts with an idea, it could be like an original story, comic book. Like, there's an influx of comic book stories nowadays. You know, every second movie that comes out, like Marvel this or DC that or Batman this, or you know, you guys know all about this. So it's like that, and yeah, for me personally, story is king. You know, like story is everything. Like I lose interest so quickly if the story is bad. You can have the most amazing imagery, but if your story is not strong, why am I watching? You know, so for me, that's 
that's what I liked. Um, I did a quote here by Ed Cutmath, who's like a co-founder of Pixar. He said, like, for all the care you put into artistry, the visual polish frequently doesn't matter if your story, if you're getting the story right, which is absolutely true. Like, story is everything. So, and it's important in animation because you're gonna be spending a lot of time to put out like your your movie. And you better make sure that your story is strong enough. And you know, like the process is like from idea, story, and then you do a storyboard. That's we all know what a storyboard is, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the way like artists like us like we get called in to draw out like whatever a scriptwriter is put on. So we sort of like visualize it into a storyboard, and. We take that storyboard and put it into like an animatic. So basically we call editors and basically we take like every shot of that storyboard and we're going to piece it together just to time as to how long our story is going to take. If one shot is right and the flow is right, you know, because you need to have like a nice flow of story from the beginning to the arcs to the end, you know, like you want to see. The reason why this part is important because we cannot, you know, like in live action movies, you can always cut, you know, and take two. We don't have that kind of luxury in animation. You can't take two. Rendering costs a lot of money, so you don't want to shoot something and it's like, ish, actually didn't like that. Can you do it again? Yeah, sure. When is rendering? <laughs> okay, I'll come to that. <laughs> I'll come to that. So, <laughs> so we cannot afford to a mistake where like you have a shot and you don't like it and you've already spent so much money outputting that shot and the next thing you know like it's not important or that shot is it's useless you know like trust me it's like taking like a brick of thousand bucks and just flashing it through the toilet it's literally like that so this phase here is really really important because of that this is where you do your editing you map up your shots, you know, you make sure that you have everything lined up and you actually scale as to how your story is flowing. If anything you need to do or change, this is the dice space to do it. So, oh yeah, and we start getting into like design. Because we're doing animation, uh, everything that you see in an animated movie, it's built. Detail, you know, it's built. We don't have like this kind of a pass or a shoe or anything like that. We have to build anything. So, your the style of your animation. I mean, your the style of your of your production. This is where it gets mapped out from your characters to your like the set. Everything out like it has to be mapped out accordingly so that you know everything fits into one world. You know, like. You can have like two different artists, but if you don't have like a design, um, the guy who looks overall uh, the overall design of your production, if he doesn't have that, and if you don't have him in, in your production, like artists are artists and they do what they feel like. So you need to encompass everything together so that it makes it looks like it comes from the same way. So hence design is also important. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh yeah, this is like another interesting part of 3D, which is called reading. So basically, this is how you get um, your 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 model or character from a, from an artist, from a moving artist. But obviously, it won't be able to move. So to get this to move, you need to um, rig it. No, don't break it. <laughs> so it's like basically rigging is like breathing <coughs> life into like a digital character. So skin deformation and facial expression and you know I wait here and with controllers to aid them. So you can run again a couple of times. So you go back. So basically these are we call them bones. But these are digital bones that, so what we do is they help you deform your character. So basically, like, 
very clever people do those things and they have controllers so that you can control your 3D character or puppet so that you can move in the movie. So it's a very tedious and trial and error uh, process. A lot of people cry here. <laughs> a lot of people avoid this. And late nights are spent here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like if you are able to get your character to be to able to move, like the best thing that will ever happen is an animator. So yeah. yeah. And yeah, uh, we get into animation after doing all of that. Building the world for your character and everything. We need to tell that story. We need to act. You know, so essentially animators are actors, you know. So for an animator it's very imperative to understand uh, physics as a whole. Like not really like calculate, <coughs> but understand how the world works. Understand that if you jump, this gravity that's gonna pull you down. And how you land on the floor also that's important because everything has to be believable. Mm -hmm. So body mechanics, you need to understand that human behavior, you know, when this lady is relaxed, how she's leaning, how is that, you need to be able to translate all of that into that 50 shades of grey character so that it's believable, you know. So you need to, like, it's like you, you're an actor and you go beyond being an actor. It's like you're an actor and you're a physicist, physicist also at the same time. So most of these guys are divas. <laughs> they want to be glorified all the time, you know, like they get angry very quickly, you know. But they're very fun to work with and this is one of the most fun part of English. And we get to almost the last part of production, which is like VFX. So basically, VFX is like uh, it adds small things into into your into your world, you know. Like I said, everything is digital. So if you put like a puppet into like let's say you want to him to sit on a couch, naturally a couch should squeeze, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't this time around. So you need people who know how to do like VFX soft bodies and all of that so that everything looks like it should. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's also a process, trial and errors, people cry here, late night, <laughs> stuff like go messy. But, you know, for us to make that story and make it believable, that's what we need to go through. And uh, lighting, I think, if you guys are filmmakers, you should know that lighting adds to your story no matter what. Mm -hmm. So, in, in a digital world, like we have no light at all. Like there is no light. Like you, it's like, it's, everything is black until you put like one light into your scene. That's when everything's gonna light up. So, that's very important because you're not only looking for natural light, you're not only like, doing natural light into your scene, but you're also trying to tell that story, you know? Like if you want a scary scene to set the mood, that's where lighting comes in. And, um, getting moods into your shots. And, yeah, rendering, that's when a lot of people chill, you know, as animators. But also, production people don't chill when it comes to the stage, because that's where the money goes out. <laughs> so, Rendering most is, is the essential part of your movie. It's, it's like, it's exactly like putting a cake in the oven and letting science do its course. So after doing all of that, putting the lighting, texturing, and all of that, you need to make sure that everything is exactly how you want it. Because, and you have to do like tons and tons of text renders. So that whenever you're gonna render like, I don't know, like, thousand frames, you're not going to lose all of those. Those are the stuff that you actually want in your scene. So it goes back to that point that I was saying that animatic is important because if you get to this point, if, I mean, after doing all of this and you realize that your sh this shot you don't want or you want to cut it or the animation is not looking great, imagine what's going to happen. You spend a lot of, you spend a lot of money doing this. So, 
you need to make sure that by the time you get to this point, everything is how you want it. So post-production. So this part here, like almost like production, but mostly what you do is in animation, when you render, you don't render one picture as it is. You render picture in passes. So basically, like we have passes like your beauty pass, your ambient inclusion, your shadows and everything, and we come them all together to make one picture. So I can't even explain this properly. <laughs> um, so imagine, imagine this, how can I put it? Um, imagine the world without shadows, how it, it would look. You know, so for us to be able to make things more real, like we start doing those kind of small effects that comes with your render passes. Like we put shadows, we also coloring comes in almost in here. Like your first original passes, like you're gonna change colors there. You need to make sure that, um, let's say you made that mistake that I was talking about. Like, but it is this time around, it's just color. Maybe you don't want this jacket to be uh, beige is it, you want you want it green. If you render this part, uh, this jacket in color, it's easy to go not to go back into rendering it again, but go in, go into compositing and change that color of your jacket only. So that's where compositing comes in, and that's why it's important to render your stuff in passes so that you can change whatever, especially stuff like color. If it's animation, then that's a different story. You might as well go back again. Uh, 2D VFX is pretty much like what I told. Uh, uh, um, what did I say about VFX? I was like adding little stuff into your story. So this time around, 2D VFX is like adding those nice dust particles. I know you guys won't believe me when I say like these particles in this room, but you won't see them. <laughs> but yes. There is particles that you add, like those small little stuff, like those, those are, uh, what do you call the other stuff? Um, uh, volumetric lights, you know, like that dusty looking stuff when the light hits and stuff like that. That's where they get added. Mostly is here. Yes, you need to add them in 3D, but you enhance them here. And color correction also is part, slightly part of that. This, basically this part, if you ask me, falls under that. That's pretty much uh, compositive. And at the end of the time, I, I mean, at the end of all the process, you get to your final movie. That's what we see mostly in movies. And pretty much that's the whole process. You know, some of the steps are even scared because trust me, it gets really, really complex. So at the end of the day, like when you go watch Cars or what's out now? Incredibles the Incredibles 2. 2. Pretty much that's the process that, you, that whole movie goes through. So yeah, I have two couple of movies that I've worked on around 2008. And yeah, I like doing it to show them to you. I apologize for the quality. I could only find them on the internet. I don't have the original DVDs anymore. But yeah, enjoy guys. To put that on. You know, and most of the time we're rendering in-house. Luckily, we're rendering in-house. Nowadays, there's like farms that you get, like render farms that you get like over the internet. So it's like people out there, like they have like rooms big, as big as this, even probably even bigger, just filled with machines and uh, air conditioners so that those machines don't burn. And basically what they do is just render just doing rendering, like doing output. And one frame like that, it can take anything from a minute to a day <laughs> or more. Uh, mostly even when you're doing like on your, on your own machine at home. But if you do stuff over like uh, render farms with people who have like super big machines in one room like this, then it's way quicker and it costs money also. Yeah. Sorry, I, I mentioned that I'm coming from, like, let's say, a policy side, investment side. I'm trying to understand the re how, then how do I get the return on the investment that I've made, and then how do I 
there are lots of hands involved, right? Yeah. So that's jobs. But I'm trying to see in like the context of the, with the youth Bob population the, booming. Bob the Boulder, um, you know, Bob the Boulder, that, that has a, an income greater than some uh, small countries put together. So you're going into billions that you can actually make off your investment. Mm -hmm. yeah, so so the, most, these are the things that no one ever talks about. Mm -hmm. Who's going to talk about money? <laughs> All those end results. So um, that's why I could never understand. I don't think anybody explains to investors properly. They say, yes, sure, you're going to spend, what, three million times, let's say, four or five of you, but your investment, and it's got legs for years and years and years thereafter. So it, it seems, to me, it actually always seems like it's a very safe investment. But um, the problem is, is that, and I'll actually discuss this just now, is that um, the artistry <coughs> is what you're paying upfront for. Mm -hmm. You're paying for people to know what they're doing first time around so that you don't end up wasting money or you know, falling through and stuff like that. Okay. And then you money through like merch, figurines, this cups, I mean, like Marvel makes money. Yeah. Like, I don't good. know, someone was telling me that, like let's say Black Panther, right? So Black Panther, mm -hmm. oh, who would make a lot of money selling movies, mm -hmm. right? Now they make money from t-shirts, from cups, from figurines, yeah. costumes, even more comic books. Ooh. And now they own, obviously they own that character. So whatever Ooh. Ooh. is made out of that character is like, that's another revenue stream. Yeah. So it's like, so I mean. Because kid, kid, kids go like, oh, it's Black Panther. I want, I want, I want, somehow I want this part of my life. And then, yes, and then, and then uh, McDonald's goes like, okay, well, look, these kids want this. Let's make a McDonald's toy with that. And so they've got to pay rights to whoever owns the license or that. So there's a lot of that, that, that background stuff that happens. Okay. And I'm, I'm trying to think of it too in terms of inclusivity. Yes. So that it's not just these top people, whoever company that's holding. Okay, yes, they've invest, invested, so yeah, they'll hold the cash. But I'm trying to stream it all the way down mm. to if we're doing this on the continent of Africa, how can we keep the money here and mm -hmm. reap it and have it reach peace? Yes, yes. And, and but you're right, because like obviously Marvel owns like all these movies, it's Marvel. They own the comic books. So I'm sure we'll probably get more comic book movies, right? Uh, I, I was trying to pitch to like ETV for like a show, right? And then all of a sudden they were like, yeah, once we fund you for the production, this is just paying the people to do the actual work. Mm -hmm. We have rights to everything that has to do with this product. Sure, right. Radio, yeah. merch, like anything we want to do, we own it. And I was like, you, how can you like... But you see what happens... You know, like that's like daylight robbery. How can you own everything forever? <laughs> Yeah. Like you can recreate the show, make yeah. a new season, make a cartoon it's, it's version, it's like Star Wars. Star Wars is like, yeah. what are they funded by Disney, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got like the cartoons on Nickelodeon, they've yeah, got really. like, I mean, we'll probably have Star Wars movies forever. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, 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 I mean, I don't know what the solution is. I mean, the solution is also like ownish, owning stuff. So obviously, the more money you put into the project, so if he gives me one million mm. and I put in two million, obviously I own more of the intellectual property, mm -hmm. meaning I get more money back. But the, the from thing, okay, maybe just like one here from the rest of the room, but one million, who am I to, I'm trying yeah, to, I know. to <laughs> make it inclusive for the, lo the average person to get involved in this. Sorry. Yeah, I like that you guys went to like the more financial side of things because, um, okay, Clearly, I'm not, well, not that much much people make a movie right now, a feature film, whatever. But um, how, how I'd like to go with it, and like what, our way up, ways I've been looking at are uh, like using social media. Mm -hmm. Like now, as YouTube, a lot of people use that Vimeo, and also what's this now, Instagram TV. Mm -hmm. Instagram has a billion people what, like on there now, actively, like every month. So. And they can. They, they might start like monetizing your content on Instagram TV to give 